see you all. Beautiful, beautiful faces. Y'all smiling. Likes it. Pastor Jared likes it. I just want you to know. We had some really, really good weather yesterday. Did y'all notice that? It was really like nice and sunny. You know, I, I was wearing my shorts. You know, kind of trying to work on my tan. <laughs> Earlier this week, uh, you know, it was snowing. There was a little bit of snow. You, did you notice that? Yep. My goodness, I have to lock my truck and four wheel just to get to work. <laughs> You're lying, Pastor. You just walked to work. I did. <laughs> but I waited until the snow melted. But it was good times. It was good times. But that's just a that's just the Mexico weather for you. You know, we're used to it by now. It doesn't catch us by surprise. And you know, it's already October. The end of October. Can you believe it? In a couple days, it's going to be November. In a month, it's going to be December, and that's 2022. That is crazy to think about. It seems like we just we just started, but you know we're coming to the end. We're also coming to the end of our sermon series on Holy Ghost stories. Uh, how, how do y'all like the, the sermon series? Amen. Okay. Amen. You know this was never meant to be an exhaustive overall um, teaching on the Holy Spirit, but but. We wanted to touch on some of the truths, and that's what we did. We touched on some of the truths, because I firmly believe we could study the Holy Spirit the rest of our lives. We'll still, we still won't be able to comprehend the truths of it. But, you know, uh, but you know, like I said, we studied on a few things. We touched on a few topics, like, like who the Holy Spirit is to us, you know, his, his place in our lives, and, and, you know, how he leads, guides, and directs us. You know, sometimes it seems like we come at, come to a roadblock in life, you know. God, God will lead us there. The Holy Spirit will lead us there to that roadblock. It's like, are we stuck here? No, if God leads you there, beloved, he will make a way. I'm just saying, God will make a way. That's his will because, you know, the Holy Spirit will not lead you apart from God's will. He's leading you. He's guiding you. He will make a way, beloved. I'm just here to tell you that. Amen. We also talked about last week, us being the temple of the Holy Spirit. We, we learned that from last week's message. You know, ourselves individually, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you are a believer in, in Christ, then you yourself possess the Holy Spirit of God. This is where God dwells. And also, likewise, collectively as a whole, the church as a whole, that's where God's Spirit dwells. That's where he makes his home. He lives among us. God is right here. I'm just here to tell you. And this morning we're going to be talking about a very specific story that happened in the early church pertaining to the Holy Spirit. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 5, and we will begin in verse 1. The word of God reads like this. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose, wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me, whether you sold the land for so much? She said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. 
And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for your undying love for us. God, thank you so much for your word, which fills us with hope, God, which fills us with encouragement, God. And I pray, God, today that we are encouraged, God, that we would hear your voice this morning speaking directly to us, speaking to our hearts, speaking to our minds. God, I pray for understanding among us, God. I pray, Lord, that we would we would have wisdom to, to apply what we have what we have read, what we have studied today, God. Lord, most of all, may you touch our hearts. May you be glorified in this place. God, we love you and we praise you. For it's in Jesus' precious name we do pray. All God's people said. Amen. <laughs> it's an interesting story. It's a very interesting story we just read. We got a man and wife. Both died the same day, hours apart. Very interesting story. And, you know, they're bringing their offering to the Lord. They're bringing it to the church. They're bringing it to the apostles. And there was something that was a little sketchy about their offering. They, they, I mean, the, it's not that they didn't, they didn't bring an offering. They brought an offering, but they lied about the offering. And we'll get more into that. But you got to understand what's going on in the early church. you got to understand what's going taking place in the early church. Because after the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit moved pretty strongly among the people, the believers in Christ, and also among the church, and also among the apostles. Because we see miracles happening. We see people getting saved, you know, left and right. God adding to the church daily. The church was meeting needs. People were, were coming to the church. It was awesome. Things were great. You know, Peter and John were headed to the temple not too long after the day of Pentecost, and they come across this young man. <laughs> Scripture says that he was lame from birth. You can read about it in Acts chapter 3. But he was lame from birth. He could not walk from the time he was born. But he would get carried to the temple every single day so he could beg. That he could beg. And John and, and, and Pe uh, John and Peter come across him, and, and, and you know he, he's begging from them, and he says, "Money and silver have we none, but what I give you, I give to you freely." In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And from that time, that man was healed, and it was awesome. It was great, and it caused a lot of commotion in the in the area around Jerusalem. A lot of commotion. And Peter and, and John were thrown into jail overnight from the Jewish authorities. And, and, and the next day, they were, they were told by the Jewish authorities, don't preach in this name. This name Jesus, don't preach it. Don't teach it. Don't do anything with it. And their response to that was this. Should we listen to you or to God? And I'm so thankful that they listened to God. Because they continued to fellowship, they continued to meet together, they just continued in the name of the Lord Jesus. They began to fellowship, and this is what the fellowship looked like. Acts chapter 4, verse 32 says this Now the multitude of those who, who believed were of one heart and one soul. I want you to pay very close attention to this. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of those things. He possessed was his own. But they had all things in common, and with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. These are some selfish people. Very selfish people. Very self-centered. I don't get any amens from that. <laughs> no, they weren't. In fact, the quite opposite. They were very giving people. Very giving people. They were very giving people. Scripture says that they had a house or something like that. Something of value. They would sell it. Take the money and lay it before the apostles' peak. 
before the apostles' feet, and the apostles would distribute that money among those that needed. They would, they would, they would, they would help out the church. Because check this out. Believers understood that they had all that they had, all their possessions. This, this is their understanding. Everything that they had was God's. And therefore, when a brother or sister had a need, those who, who could meet that need, they were led to do so. They wanted to do so. They wanted to serve God in that fashion. The money was given to the apostles, and they distributed. Does, does this look familiar? Does this kind of look familiar? Does this look like what takes place here in a church? Does it look like what happens in an early church? I mean, look, 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 let's look earlier in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verse 44 says this. Now all who believed were, were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Beloved, they gave. And it was not just one time. This was something that they continued to do. This is something that they continued on to do. It, 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 it wasn't just a one-time deal. This is a way of life for the early church. I just want you to know. I just want you to know. I'm just here to tell you. The Spirit moved mightily among these folks, and He allowed them, he, he, he pressed upon their hearts to give, to give, and to give. They had a very giving heart. It's quiet in here now. How y'all doing? Good. I say give and pat. You know, it gets quiet. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. But they had a giving heart. And I want you to know that human heart does not receive blood. You know, our own human hearts, it does not receive blood just to store it up. You know what I mean? You know, the heart, it's literally the heart of the body, you know? It, it's, it's what... It, it receives blood and it also pumps it out. It receives blood in one valve and it goes out of the There's a circulation that takes place, and that's what is needed for a healthy body to be healthy. Blood constantly flows because of that heart. I mean, if it stored up blood and you know no blood was coming out, it would become unhealthy. Am I right? right. We have heart problems. We would have heart issues. I mean, I mean, the same is true for all fluids in a healthy body. I mean, think about one cell. You know, if it would store up its properties, if it didn't get rid of some of the properties, you'd be looking at some, some illnesses within the body. Kidney failure. Liver disease. Stuff like that. Our bodies were designed by God. God formed us. God made us. And he designed our bodies to be giving. It's a part of who we are. Not only as human beings, it's a part of who we are as Christians. As believers in Christ, we are to give. We are to give. We are to give, beloved. I mean, the whole human system lives by giving. I mean, that's God's design. I mean, a healthy body gives. A healthy church give, gives. I mean, this goes all the way down to the individual being. Check out Acts chapter 4, verse 36. And Joseph, who, had, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement, was a Levite of the country of Cyprus. Having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Interesting. Very interesting. I mean, not only do we have the example of the church giving, you know, it said that, that they, if they had land or whatever, you know, property or whatever, they sold it and gave the money to the apostles. Now we have a very specific person right here, Barnabas. He gave. He did that. And, and, and it specifically says that he's a Levite. It also says that he's from the land of Cyprus. I mean, he's introduced here as a role model among those who donated and gave. Barnabas was a member of the priestly tribe of Levi. He later became an associate of the Apostle Paul. I find it awesome that he, being a Levite, had land to give. 
Check out Numbers chapter 8, 18, verse 20. And the Lord said to Aaron, You priests will receive no allotment of land or share property among the people of Israel. I am your lot. If you were of, a, of the priestly tribe Levi, you had no inheritance. You had no land. I mean, that, that, it, it went against the law of Moses. You just didn't have that. You didn't have land. But he has land. And I think he found a loophole because he said it says he was from Cyprus. He was outside of Israel. He was outside of Israel. I mean, he, that could have been his vacation spot. Or you know what? He could have been from Cyprus and traveling to Jerusalem and made that journey just to give his offering. I find that amazing that you would want to give, that you would do all that to, to, to want to give, to give, to give to God, to give to the church so that, so that needs are met. Think about that. That's just the heart of the church in that day and time. That they would give, that they would give, that they would give. The Holy Spirit moved upon them, and I am serious about that. I don't just say that just to say that. The Holy Spirit moved upon them and wanted to show love, and this is how they did it. We can say that this was a genuine gift out of the goodness of his heart. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Think about that. Think about that. Seriously, we don't see Barnabas or the rest of the church, you know, like struggling with their giving, you know, and the offering plate comes around and they're like, here. <laughs> Regretting what they just did, you know. We don't see that. They gave cheerfully. And the Apostle Paul says, God loves a cheerful giver. Their hearts were ready for that, their hearts were prepared to give. It's awesome. This is what a Holy Spirit filled church looks like. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When our hearts are in line with the Holy Spirit, this is what it looks like. We give. We give. We give. As part of God's design, as part of how the church should function. Let me tell you a little story. A mother wanted to teach her daughter a moral lesson, okay? She gave the little girl a quarter and a dollar for church. You know, trying to teach her a lesson. And she tells the daughter, put, put whatever you want in the collection plate and keep the other for yourself. So, so the idea was to, for her to either keep the dollar or the quarter, but she's make, giving, the, giving the child a decision to make. When they were coming out of church, the mother asked her daughter which amount she had given. And this is the response of the little girl. Well, I was going to give the dollar, but just before the collection, that man up there in the pulpit said that we should all be cheerful givers. I knew I'd be a lot more cheerful if I gave a quarter. So I did. She kept a dollar. But the point of that is this. I honestly believe that Barnabas actually was recorded in the Bible to show us that we can't outgive God. That if everyone gave like this, needs would be met, lives would be changed, lives would be impacted. You know what I mean? And we'd be allowing the Holy Spirit to move through our church. Now let's return to Ananias and Sapphira. We opened up with that passage. Let's go back there. Let's see how they're doing. Let's see how they're doing. We, we know what happens to them, but let, 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 let's, just, let's just check this out. Acts chapter 5 verse 1 says this. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife, also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. These are two classic examples of hypocrisy. You know that word. Classic examples of hypocrisy among Christians who fake their spirituality to impress others. 
Nobody does that. No, nobody, nobody does that. Uh -huh. No. That happened in church. <laughs> but they faked. Here we have an actual recording of somebody that did that. They were in the congregation of those who believed and were involved with the Holy Spirit, but they remained hypocrites. It can happen. It can happen. It's recorded right here. It can happen, and it probably still happens. Or am I missing something? I mean, think about this. As you probably know, real U.S. currency has a number of features designed to make it harder to counterfeit. I mean, take out a $20 bill right now, you'll see a bar strip on there, and you hold it up to the light. You know there's a bar strip right there telling you that it's authentic, that it's real. I mean, there's an actual serial number on that barcode. I mean, there's a couple of other things that you could do. People take out markers and put a mark on there to show that it's authentic. There are ways to catch counterfeits. See, what a counterfeit is, is trying to pass itself off as something more valuable than it is. Not all Christians are hypocrites. They're not. I'll be honest with you. Not every dollar bill in your wallet is a counterfeit. But every now and then, the bank will come across a counterfeit bill. And every now and then, the church will come across a counterfeit something to think about. You see, a genuine believer follows Christ. A genuine believer is led by the Holy Spirit. A genuine believer will not have to lie about their offering to God. It can happen within a church. It can happen. Let's read further on. Acts chapter 5 verse 3 says this, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to life with the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's look at that question that Peter asked. Why has Satan filled your heart? The question implies that Ananias and Sapphira, Sapphira, they were satanically inspired. We can say that. We can say that. And that their hypocrisy was the work of the devil. And it's really, it really isn't surprising to see that there is opposition in this point in time. Like I said, the Holy Spirit was moving mightily among the believers, among the church, among the apostles. And the devil even tried to put John and Peter in jail, remember? He put them in jail to try to discourage them, to try to scare them. But that didn't work. So you know what Satan tried to do next? Corrupt the church. Corrupt the church. Why not, why not work on the inside? Why not do some moving on the inside? Why not plant a seed here and try to corrupt the church? And he used Ananias and Sapphira to do his dirty work. I mean, the church was acting like a family. Needs were met. The church had all things in common. Barnabas made a huge contribution to the church, and Ananias and Sapphira probably wanted a little bit of recognition for themselves. We want honor, too. I want a plaque on my wall, too. I want one of those trophies. Look at me, I did something. Look who I am. I can picture them selling their land, carrying a big bag of money back home, throwing it on the living room floor, floor you know what I'm saying? Taking a look at it. It's a lot of money. Stacks of money, stacks of coins, stacks of silver. Stacks of gold, just looking at that money. Because you know that land is not, it's not cheap. It's worth something. But I can picture them looking at that, you know, in their living room. It's a lot of money right there. Money will make you do some crazy things, you know that? It'll make you do some crazy things. The Bible calls that a snare or a trap. You ever hear somebody say this, if I had a million dollars, I'd give it to the church. <laughs> sure you would. 
Sure. <laughs> you know, the silly thing is that money doesn't tend to make greedy people unselfish. It has a tendency to make greedy people more greedy. The more you have, the more you want. I picture in my mind Ananias and Sapphira looking at that money the rest of the week and saying, you know, we haven't saved a thing for our retirement. We haven't done that. What about the kids' college? What, what, what about that? What, what about our vacation? We're supposed to head up to the mountains. We're supposed to head out to the island. What about brand new ribs for the camel, you know? <laughs> Let's get the spinners for the camel. They probably were thinking about some things. You know, by Sunday they get half the money in the bag and half under their mattress. You know, was it wrong for them to only put part of the money away? Was it wrong for them to do that? No. There's no record of God telling them to do it. And that's the point of Pete, that Peter makes in verse 4. He says, it was in your own control. It was in your own control. The problem was not they're giving only part of the money. The problem was, with, was that they said they were giving it all. They intentionally lied to lift themselves up. They pretended to be something they were not. They sold that land, kept back part of it, gave the other part to the church, and lied to the church. Oh yeah, we, 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 um, we gave everything. We gave everything. Look at us, we're just, we're just like Barnabas. We're just like the rest of the church. That's where it became a problem. That they lied. And I honestly believe that they just wanted some recognition. So how do we keep ourselves in tune with the Holy Spirit? I'm going to see how you respond to this. Because first service responded. I won't say. How do we keep in tune with the Holy Spirit? We give. We give. We give. We give. It's who God designed us to be. It's how he designed our bodies. We give. That's how he designed this body, the church body, that we give. That we give. That we give. That we give, church. Look at what the Lord Jesus says in chapter 6, verse 1. And, and this is the Lord Jesus. If you have your Bibles, you notice that those are red letters. Am I right? Yeah. Woo! You know that Jesus is talking. So this is one of those things we don't roll our eyes at. You wouldn't do that. Nope. I'm choking. Come on, guys. Lighten me up. Amen, Pastor. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 says this. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Does that look like Ananias and Sapphira? Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, verse 2, when you do your charitable deeds, you not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory for men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do your charitable deeds, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be done in secret. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Amen. Lord Jesus, talk to us. Speak to us. You know, like I said, I can't emphasize this enough. Giving is a part of who we are as Christians. As followers of Christ, we are to give. Jesus says, when you do your charitable deed, when you do your charitable deed, when you give, beloved, it's expected of us. God expects this. The Lord Jesus expects this. I mean, looking at this passage, we already talked about hypocrites enough in the first part of the message. I don't think we need to focus any more on that. However, I don't want to focus so much on what the hypocrites are doing that we look, overlook what we should be doing. Because what we should be doing is giving. We give. We give, we give, and we give. I mean, wealth is not a bad thing until it takes place of the God we serve. Look at what the Lord Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters. 
For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You know, the religious leaders of the day taught that devotion to money and devotion to God were completely compatible. But the Lord Jesus tells us otherwise. Giving is a part of who we are. Giving is a part of our worship. Giving shows who we belong to. Giving shows who we are following. Giving shows that we are a healthy body of believers. God himself gave. Take a look at John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave, that he gave, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We should be following in the footsteps of our father. He gave, he gave, he gave, he gave. Again, it's, it's who we are. We are giving, we are givers. And let me just say, it's because of your giving, the church is giving. We can meet in a place like this. It's because of your giving, we have the lights on. It's because of your giving that bills are paid. We're able to reach out to those who are watching us online. And for those of you that tithe on a regular basis, we thank you for what you are doing. We pray that you continue to be an example to those around you. And for those that are, that are, that are still thinking about it, God's tugging on your heart, we, 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 pray that, we pray that God touches your heart to do so. Because we want to be a healthy church. We want to be healthy. We want to be healthy. And it's how... It's how it's how our body functions. It's how our church body functions. I mean, if you, if you haven't already noticed out there that we do have tithing envelopes. And I'll just be honest with you. This is not one of the, not the easiest message for me to preach. It's not the easiest message for me to preach. But you know what? I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't preach this. I would not be doing my job if I didn't preach this. Amen. Also, want you to know that we are not taking. For those that are that are watching online, this may be very beneficial to you. Um, we now have a website. We are now online. If anybody wants information on the church, they can now go here. Our church address is on there. Our church mailing address is on here. Our phone number is on here. For those that, that like Facebook, you know, you can click on Facebook and that'll be on there. Our YouTube channel is on there. And you can also give on this website. Beloved, we have never been able to do that before. You can now give on this website. And this is the link. Y'all want to take a picture? You want to write it down? It's right there. But check out our website. You can now give online. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Isn't that awesome? We can now do that. For you watching online, that's for you. You can now give online. And beloved, like I said, it's not the easiest message for me to preach, but you know what? It's a part of who we are. This is a part of who we are. We give. We give. We give. That's who God designed us to be. That's who we are as a church. That who, that's who we are as Lighthouse Church. Would y'all pray with me? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Lord, for your undying love for us, God. Father, I pray that this message here would not fall upon dead ears, but upon open hearts, God. Lord, we, may we be mindful, Lord, that we are, we are, we are you givers. That we... That we that, that that's who you designed us to be, Lord. That's who you are. And you want us to walk in your footsteps. God, may we give. May you touch hearts today. May you impact lives today, God. 
God above all else, may be glorified in this place. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. And it's in Jesus' precious name we do pray. Amen. 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 Just a few announcements. Um, uh, Brother Howie will be coming up to do that. And know that I love you all. Lord bless you, and may he keep you. Amen. change our mindset about giving, you know, it's not just about the money, it's it's building the kingdom of God, amen? amen. Um, I heard this saying, it said, what you love, you'll sow into. What you love, you'll sow into. And I know we all love the Lord, and we all love the body, but we love the church, amen? So let's sow into the church, let's sow into the, into the body, let's sow into the kingdom, amen? Um, we have Brother Martin back there with the offering. You know, give your offering and your tithing, amen? I, I promise you it's, it's into good ground. You know, when you plant a seed into good ground, you can expect a good harvest, right? And in the same way, this church is good ground, amen? And for those of you online, you know, you can go to the website. Or if you guys want to do it later, you yourselves too want to go to the website and give it that way. Try it out, amen. So the next announcement, tomorrow is the big day. The big day. Our life night outreach. Amen. How many excited? Amen. All four of us. <laughs> I'm excited. Come on, church. Tomorrow's gonna be great. Tomorrow is going to be great. It's gonna be great. Because we are gonna do this together. Lighthouse Church is coming together to reach the, the, the community. To show the love of God, to show the joy of the Lord, amen. And we're going to be a blessing, amen. This is us as a church sowing a seed into the community, believing and trusting that families are going to come to the Lord, amen. That children, amen, are going to experience the love of God for the first time, probably ever, amen. And so, yeah, yes, we're going to have games, yes, we're going to have fun. But this is going to be an outreach to the community. Amen? Amen. So it's happening tomorrow. We're starting at 4 o'clock. But today, okay, we are going to start setting up. So uh, there's some, there's some sign-up sheets out there for volunteers or some certain things like um, candy, hot dog. You, you can see it. So we are going to come. We're going to leave. We're going to dismiss. Okay? But we're going to come back at 1 o'clock. For those of you that want to, for those of you that want to volunteer, and we're going to set up in here in the church. We're planning to do it outside, but considering the weather, it would probably be better to do it inside because we don't want we don't want people to be too cold. So we're going to get all these chairs. We're going to stack them up. We're going to stack them up here. We're going to set up the booths. I don't know if you guys know how to decorate. I, I, I'm not really that good of a decorator. I can blow up some balloons. That's about it. But we're going to decorate this place, and uh, we're going to be in prayer, amen? We're going to be in prayer for tomorrow, that for every person that walks into these doors, that they would experience the love of God. That every person that walks through these doors, as, they, as we get ready to, to be a blessing to them, that they would see, like, wow, you know, there's something about this church, there's something different about this church, amen? We're going to be uh, assembling a hundred gift bags. 100 little treat bags for the kids. So we're going to put candy in there. We're going to put a Bible in there. We're going to put glow sticks, a bunch of fun stuff, okay? So we need help. So um, if you want to come back at 1 o'clock to help us put this all together, let's come together and do it, amen? There's a saying I always heard that goes like this. Many hands make the labor light. Meaning... The more of us that come in here and knock this out, we'll be done in no time. Amen? Because yeah. I can't, I'll tell you this, I can't do this by myself. Pastor Jerry can't do this by, we can't do it by ourselves. We, we need your help. So let's come together, amen, as Lighthouse Church to put this together to be a blessing, amen. Uh, check out the sign-up sheets. 
Uh, if you want to bring more candy, we're going to be giving out free hot dogs, um, free waters to everyone that comes through. So if you want to bring some more. Also, one of the big things is we're going to have a cakewalk in here. How many have been to a cakewalk before? <laughs> cakewalk? Fun times, right? So I, I, I want to ask all of you, all the bakers in the house, we, we need you to bake some baked goods, amen? We need, to, we need you to whip out that chocolate chip recipe and make some cookies or that banana nut bread muffin recipe and make some muffins, amen? Uh, for all of you who can, amen, we would appreciate if you could bake something to bring to the cakewalk and then we're going to be having a cakewalk right here. So I knew that we wouldn't have too much time to bake. So we went to Sam's Club yesterday and we got those uh, blueberry muffins and the chocolate chip muffins and the banana. You know Sam's Club muffins are good. So we got some of that, amen? Yeah? So, uh, so check out the cyber sheets and then we're going to meet back here at 1. Uh, go home, change into your comfortable clothes, get a quick bite to eat, and we'll come back at 1 and then we'll start setting everything up. Sound like a plan? All right? All right, God bless you guys. Don't forget to give right there, and we'll see you guys.